Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Okay, today, I'd like to continue the discussion on noise in a communication system. Okay, so this video, I'm going to discuss on all the different types of noise in microwave circuit. Okay, the word microwave simply means high frequency. Okay, so this video, I'm going to discuss the internal, the external noise in high frequency circuit. Okay, I have decided to rename this as the part one series discussion on noise in a communication system. Okay, this is because this video, like what I mentioned early on, I'm going to introduce the different types of noise in microwave circuit. Okay, so therefore, okay, I have renamed this video as the part one series discussion. Guys, again, if you're keen to know more about noise in a communication system, you are always welcome okay, to take a look on the playlist okay, under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion of noise in a communication system. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome. Okay, to ask me through the comment. Guys, recently, I also don't have much comment. So guys, please always help me okay, by giving me comment how to improve the quality of this channel. Okay, before I continue, okay, I urge you, okay, so later on, okay, if this video is helpful, please help it by like this video. Okay, for those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, let's quickly understand okay, what is noise in microwave circuit. Okay, before I go into deep discussion on the noise in microwave circuit, okay, let me quickly explain okay, why noise play a crucial role. Okay, whether we receive or whether we don't receive the signal is actually part of noise also. Noise is also a determining factor Okay, whether are we possible to receive the signal or cannot receive the signal. Imagine in a classroom environment. Okay, for example, the teacher giving a lecture. Okay, if the class are all quiet, then all the signal from the teacher will be able to reach the receiver, which is the student. Okay, so now imagine okay, in a noisy class okay, where everybody are making a lot of noise, then the signal of the teacher may not be able to receive by the student that actually want to learn. So the teacher need to increase the signal in order to ensure that the signal will be able to propagate to the receiver. So therefore, over here, you can see that noise become a determinative factor, okay, whether we can receive or we cannot receive the signal. So basically, noise actually play a crucial role. This is especially true on noise in microwave circuit. Okay, as I mentioned early on, Microwave circuit simply means high frequency. High frequency, okay, it becomes a very critical issue because even very small amount of noise, they can significantly affect the performance of the microwave circuit. Therefore, okay, to understand and mitigate noise in microwave circuit becomes essential okay, so as for us to maintain the signal in gravity, and we also need to ensure the proper function of device Okay, so later on, you will see that we actually use an amplifier okay, to see how noise plays a role okay, on amplifier. Noise can enter a microwave system from external source. So basically from external source, which means that it's not really controlled by you. Something that falls outside your design, which means that noise from external source. Or it can be generated within the system itself, okay, within your device yourself. Okay, so therefore, this is what we call an uh, internal. Okay, noise power result from random process, okay, such as movement of charge, hole in the electron tubes, solid state device, propagation through the atmosphere, or most fundamentally, thermal vibration in any component at a temperature above absolute zero. Okay, we have always assumed that all noise from component is linear. Okay, linear means that the output signal is direct proportional to the input signal. And therefore, because of this, it becomes deterministic, okay, which means that the output signal is more or less predictable from the input signal. So basically, from this diagram here, you can see that this straight line, 
Okay, so this is what we call a deterministic. Okay, so what we have at the input, more or less we can determine what will be at the output. So this is what it means. Okay, because it is linear. So therefore, if we know the input, we are able to know the output. However, in reality, okay, no component noise behave this way over an unlimited range of input and output signal level. Okay, so basically this is an amplifier. Okay, you can see that this zone here, okay, they are not linear. This zone here, again, they are not linear. So this is what it means. In reality, okay, there is not possible to have any form of noise that behave in a linear way. Okay, so noise is in fact a random. Okay, we can't predict noise. So therefore, in the reality, okay, no component noise behave in a linear manner. Okay, over an unlimited range of input and output signal level. Okay, so basically from here, you can see that the input, uh, so-called, sorry, the lower end here and the upper end, okay, they don't behave in a linear manner. Okay, however, in practice, that is usually a range of signal level over which this assumption are approximate valid. Okay, this range is called the dynamic range of the component. Okay, which means that, for example, this is an amplifier. Okay, we would like to use the amplifier in this zone, okay, which is called the linear zone, because okay, this is so-called predictable. So this is something that we call a dynamic range. So this is a zone that we actually want to work with amplifier because we are able to predict Outside, okay, which means that over here and over here, this is the zone that we will not want the amplifier to work okay, because it is not predictable at all now. As an example, okay, let's quickly consider a realistic microwave transistor amplifier having a power gain G. Okay, so basically, I mentioned realistic okay, because you know the amplifier cannot start from zero all the way up as strict as possible all the way. So this is a realistic microwave transistor amplifier. Okay, so basically you see that these are all the noise. This is what we call the saturation. Okay, let's take a look. So basically, we quickly mentioned that this amplifier has a gain of G. Okay, if the amplifier were ideal, okay, which means that they are linear, okay, the output power will be related to the input power as such. Okay, so the output is equal to the gain multiply by the input if this is linear and this relationship will hold true for any value of p in okay thus if p in is equal to zero we will have p up equals to zero and once p in is equal to 10 to power 6 watt and when the gain is 10 db then we will have a p up of 10 to power 7 watt okay however neither of these results will actually occur in practice however because of noise generated by the amplifier itself some Non-zero noise up power will always be delivered by the amplifier, even when the input power is zero. Okay, so in short, imagine here, okay, if let's say we don't have any signal that is supplied to the amplifier. However, because of the internal noise from the amplifier, at the output of the amplifier will not become a zero. Imagine we put in zero, okay, at the output, okay, if it's a zero, it's under ideal. In the reality world or in the practical world, Okay, so basically this amplifier creates some form of noise. So therefore, okay, basically this part here is when the P in is at very low number. And this is what we call noise. And we are going to take a closer look later on. At the other extreme, okay, very high input power will cause the amplifier to fear. Okay, so basically you know that okay, we can so-called improve okay, in a linear way. Okay, imagine that. Can you continuous run at a constant speed there will be a time that you become tired and this is what you mean then you start to feel okay which means that you can't actually make it constantly linear anymore so this is why i quickly uh so-called explain imagine that you are actually running at a constant speed so the moment that you actually pick up there's no way that you can continue to pick up your speed okay so this is the zone that we call you actually feel and for amplifier this is the zone that the amplifier actually feel or they call saturation okay at very low input power level okay the output will be dominated by the noise generated by the amplifier okay which i have explained on the previous slide okay so basically at the very low input power level okay the output 
basically will be dominated by the noise that is actually self-generated by the amplifier. Okay, this level is often called the noise floor of the component of the system. Okay, so basically this is what we call the noise floor. Okay, so basically this is the noise okay, that is typically generated, let's say, by the amplifier itself. And the typical value may range from minus 80 dBm to minus 140 dBm. Okay, so in short, okay, we want to have the noise floor as low as possible. Okay, so if we have a lower noise floor, then it will be closer so-called to the zero point that we actually under the ideal situation here. Okay, so this is what I mean. Typical value is minus 80 to minus 140 dBm over the bandwidth of the system okay, with the lowest value being obtained with thermal cool component. Above the noise floor, okay, the amplifier will have a range of input power for which, okay, so basically this is what we call linear, which we have so-called study early on is closely approximate. Okay, this is the usable dynamic range of the component. At the upper end of this range, the output will become saturated, okay, which means that the output power not longer increase linearly as the input power increase. Excessive input power will lead to failure of the amplifier. Okay, so basically, this is what I have discussed earlier on, okay, on the higher value of the input signal. Okay, so before I continue, okay, if this video somehow is helpful, okay, please sub this channel by like this video. If you have learned something, please consider to subscribe and also on your notification bell. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so basically this, I'm going to discuss on the internal noise and also the external noise. Okay, the noise that is generated internally in a device or component okay, is usually caused by random motion of charge or charge carrier in device and material. Okay, so these are all the internal noise. We have thermal noise. Okay, so on the part two series discussion, okay, I have discussed about the thermal noise. Okay, so thermal noise is also known as Johnson Nyquist noise. Okay, it basically arises due to the random motion of electron in a resistivity component and is actually proportional to temperature and bandwidth of the system. Okay, so in short, this noise is actually proportional to temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the noise. Also proportional to bandwidth. The larger the bandwidth, the more the thermal noise. Next will be on short noise. Okay, this actually occurs in semiconductor device okay, for diode and transistor. Okay, mainly due to the discrete nature of charge carrier, electron or host crossing a potential barrier. Okay, so this is what we call a short noise. Freaker noise. Okay, basically this is also known as one over F noise. Okay, the F is frequency. Okay, they actually dominate at low frequency. Okay, which means that this is more problematic at low frequency. Okay, it decreases with increasing frequency. When the frequency increases, this becomes less impactful. And therefore, this is actually caused by various factors like the fluctuation in the carrier density or mobile mobility in active device. Phase noise, okay, basically phase noise arises in oscillator and frequency synthesizer. Okay, so basically these two things they work a lot with phase. So basically this becomes a key issue on phase noise. Okay, due to the fluctuation in the phase of the signal leading to sideband noise around the carrier frequency. Intermodulation noise, basically they generate when multiple signals interact within a non-linear device. Okay, this led to the spurious frequency component. Okay, so this slide here explain all the internal noise, which means that this actually happened inside your device, which you can actually more or less control. Okay, let's take a look on the external noise. Okay, the external noise may be introduced into a system either by a receiving antenna or by electromagnetic coupling. So basically, in short, if you have some neighboring okay, device, okay, they basically transmit or receive, this becomes a big issue. Okay, some source of external RF noise include the following. Okay, so first will be the thermal noise from the ground. Cosmic background noise from the sun, uh, from the sky, sorry, noise from the stars, including the sun, lightning, gas discharge lamp, radio, TV, and cellular system, wireless device, microwave oven, and deliberate jamming device. 
So basically, these are all the possible noise okay, for the internal and also for the external. For the internal, these are all the possible internal noise. And these are all the possible for external noise. We don't have much control on the external noise, but we can do some control on the internal noise. So with this, okay, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, hopefully, okay, you have a better understanding of noise in the communication system. So with this, bye for now. Thank you so much.